is Oki Alehua, the Tercidoros polymorpha, uh, extremely variable species, hence the species specific epithet polymorpha, meaning many forms. When you come to look at this one, you notice that the upper surface of the leaves are smooth and shiny, and then when you flip it on the underside, it's scurfy and you cannot rub the hairs off. Very important is when you plant your plant, you want to see where the soil line is filled up in the pot. And you want to plant the plant flush with the soil line of the soil potting media. You usually use the pot as a great mechanism before we take the roots out and kind of measure, you know, can this go in? And if it's not deep enough, dig some more. It's good to dig a hole slightly wider than the actual soil to give the roots nice loose dirt to kind of grow and fill in. But usually you can get away with just having it at least fitting in flush, having a little bit extra depth here, which is somewhere for the soil for the roots to kind of, you know, gain new territory and pull nutrients. Because this soil is a little bit clamored from not having a diverse ecosystem to put the organic nutrients, we usually like to just add a little bit of, you know, fertilizer and this will help produce nutrients and kind of kickstart any um, kind of reaction with the biome in the soil. Soil is a living thing, so versus potty media, which is a filled with organic matter, the nutrients in here will actually kind of feed some of the microorganisms and they usually add in a bit of decayed organic matter in here because it adds a texture to the soil. Um, soil texture is very important because if it's too much clay, there's shrinking and swelling, then it causes cracking. Cracking is really bad for small fine roots that usually pull nutrients and pull moisture because that shrinking and swelling, the cracking will shear off the roots. What we're doing right now is extracting the plant. You can see this plant had filled out the pot, the roots kind of sticking out, but for this species, that's okay. Generally, you don't want the plant, like from other plants that are more sensitive, you don't want the pot to like be extremely filled with roots because the roots can coil and then they can constrict the plant even after planting. You kind of want to do this. So I like to give it a little tap, kind of squish it a little bit. Not too hard, not too soft, but I'm gonna pull it out. So you can see actually this one yeah, so there's like vigorous roots right here. They're white in color, you know, they're not super brown. Some of these are probably dead, but it's okay. No, it's again, you're not gonna get like perfect roots all the time, but hardy species, it'll be, it'll be okay. You wanna take this after we measured our soil depth. You wanna make sure your potting media is moist before you put it in and you want to just kind of fit it in there as best as you can. So now I'm going to use this because this is more moist than the surrounding soil right now. I usually kind of give it a little um, kind of like a pre-charge, like a, you know, you're priming the soil to become wet. So when you do plant it, it has moisture available to the root system already. So after you prime it a little bit, maybe I'll do a little bit more on this side. and let it percolate into the ground. Next, you just take whatever surrounding soil that you have, and then you just make sure there are no air pockets. And this is a very critical step. Air pockets um, cause an uneven moisture, like wetting and drying of the root system. And even though roots like well-draining, or plants like well-draining soil to get air to the roots, it needs a consistent layer of moisture and that capillary action to be filled. Because if you have dry pockets, then it's just gonna be suffering and then you have root dieback. And when root dieback happens, you know, it stresses the plant out. So you wanna fill in with your hands, like kind of take your fingers and just make sure all the pukas are more or less filled. Like that. What I like to do, this is not totally necessary all the time, but to give a good home for these microorganisms, you take 
a lot of these dead organic material and you kind of mix it into the top layer. That way, any kind of clay minerals and stuff, it'll have um, organic layer for things like rhizobia, so microorganisms that fill the roots and actually give surface area. Decaying woody matter like this is good. You never want to shove green uh, matter into your hole and like in your compost because the bacteria and stuff that use that try to break it down will actually pull nitrogen and nutrients from that green or from the environment to break down the green matter. So you always want to put already broken down matter into the hole if you're going to do that. Learning that, you know, if the bacteria, the microorganisms are pulling nutrients actually away from the plant to break down the matter. Like you want to have it already broken down and that sets the stage for a healthy uh, soil ecosystem. Give it another soak of water. And then, yeah, just double check the soil level is good. The plant's happy, no pukas. Plant with care. If the soil is a little loose and the plant isn't sold out, just, you know, make sure you just keep that ball intact when you plant it because any loose soil that is, you know, touching other roots will shear off the roots and it'll be cause disturbance. But you usually avoid that. It's pretty forgiving and then just, you know, plant it. But, you know, handle with care and make sure it's deep enough. A little bit of fertilizer, charge it with some water, bury it, and it should be good. Healthy soil is paramount to a healthy plant life. And healthy plant life means a healthy watershed.